Hello everybody and welcome once again to all of Fabric 3. Today we are going to do some um, high power energy, well high voltage stuff and we're also going to have a look at making titanium. So let's get started. So before we start let's have a look at this. This is the advanced large steam boiler and the uses of the large steam boiler, if we can press the uses on it, we can actually use that for a high pressure steam boiler um, which we might want to make as it happens but we need clean stainless steel machines. So we're going to make this anyway because it is also a multi-block. This one is probably also a multi-block. Let's have a look at the uses of this one just to make sure. Oh, that makes an advanced one with these uh, large advanced pumps. But multi-block wise, ooh, they are diff they are incompatible, but it doesn't matter that much. Let's go back and make, let's keep going back two steps and we'll make this one here, the advanced steam boiler. If you look at the uses of that, here we can see we need uh, heat proof, that was the same as the previous one, but with bronze plated bricks, bronze pipe machine casings and the large steam boiler. So I'm going to make it and we'll see what how it works out. And in here I've actually got the bits that we need for that. So we needed these three, these three items to go with that one. But here I'm going to leave that for today. I'm not going to assemble it all today we'll do that next time i think here we've got a heat exchanger so the heat exchanger was advanced pumps turbo machine casings and two stainless steel pipe machine casings as we did a previous one heat proof and frost proof casing so we've done all of that stuff we will make this one up and i'm also going to put that here because those are the materials that are required for this one as well so if we look at the uses of this uh, obviously it tells you what it makes we we We've dealt with that before as it happens. Oh yes, in fact, yeah, okay. So it makes heavy water is obviously nuclear stuff. We haven't got that far yet. Heavy, high pressure steam, uh, high pressure, heavy water steam. No, that's not useful. There are some of these ones which we will be able to make. And I think uh, nothing to do with heavy. That's the important thing. And all of these are heavy because that's all. Heavy water is nuclear stuff. Water and high pressure steam. Oh, that's the one. We can regain steam and we can regain um, some high pressure water, which is used in the high, the pressurizer. Anyway, and that's this block here. As I said, we've got these blocks. We've got everything prepared for that. Now, today, let's make this. This is an MV to HV transformer. I'm actually not going to do this one. We're going to do it the other way around, which is a high voltage to medium voltage transformer like this and you'll see why in a minute and the other thing I want to look at was the, the uses of these if we have a look at recipe for this we would make these um, st st oh, solid titanium machine casings the recipe for that was with these large plates so 32 uh, titanium plates will make one large no will make one of those casings and the recipe for these is to flatten or compress a titanium ingot and the recipe for titanium ingots is actually here the ones we'll be using is this one from hot titanium hot ingots and there are, there's two recipes for this uh, this is the one i've been doing so far so magnesium sulfuric solution three buckets of that with four titanium crush dust will make four hot ingots and produce back two and a half buckets of sulfuric solution so you lose half a bucket of manganese sulfuric solution each time the other way of doing it is putting uh, titanium dust in the electrical blast furnace cantals here which is the one we've actually got now and those make the ingots directly uh, unfortunately the recipe for the titanium dust is using tiny titanium dust in terms of modern industrialization and the recipe for those is in the electrolyzer so we can put bauxite in the electrolyzer which will produce aluminium and tiny titanium so we need a lot <laughs> we need to make two cases we need nine stacks of tiny titanium dust which means we need 90 stacks of bauxite dust a lot um, probably I've actually not been doing it that way. I'm going to be honest. I have been making using UU matter. Um, and the UU matter, five of those produces one titanium dust. But we will go and have a look at how to do it with uh, modern industrialization because it's the easiest. Uh, if you haven't got a uh, tech reborn in the pack, we have to do it this way. So what I've done here is I've maxed out this. So we have now a cobblestone generator Mark IV 
and as you can see that's putting uh, making cobblestone really fast and the cobblestone is going out some of it's coming into here and as you can see it's making scrap oh looks like the scraps full and the other bits coming into here to make some singularities uh, and as you can see that's going to come up here we've got too much stuff I have to get rid of some of this stuff and I come along what I do is I come along here actually the crafting table here isn't there uh, oh it's not going to be let's have a look at the use of this probably the easiest way to do use of scrap to produce scrap boxes like that we've got 42 scrap boxes we can put those straight into here like this so it's actually this um turtle isn't actually fast enough to process all of these but it fills up fairly quickly and because it's turning around fairly frequently as well there's a good chance that i actually stop the game when it's not pointing at this chest and which means the next time I start the game it's not working and I've got to manually turn it around. So what I've done is I've put a torch in here and changed the program a little bit and all I did is basically turn, so you see at the moment it's turning um, anti-clockwise from the top or turning left all the time. What I do now is just, at the beginning is I just turn left until I find a torch in front of it and then I turn back one and that's it. Dead easy. Well, I'll put the program up in the paste bin anyway so that's making quite a lot of UU matter and that's coming in here and it's probably coming in at a reasonably fast rate so let's have a look at UU matter let's make sure my mouse is in the right place how many times I've done that so we've got 4974 and probably by the time I'm looking at this this will actually increase so that needs four scrap boxes per um, there we go per UU matter and it also means that we need for four scrap boxes we need nine so we need 36 scrap so as you can see it's it doesn't take too long before the next one comes in probably about 15 seconds or something like that I'm not exactly sure I haven't timed it but anyway it trickles in as you can see slowly anyway it's night time I'll have a quick sleep and I'll see you in a second so what I've been doing I'm not sure whether I've got enough of these let's have a look for steel in here yeah. I want to, oh yes, I've got 642 steel pipe casings. I want to take some of these out of here like this. And in fact, let's just put these these scraps into here. We'll take the others out some other stage. So let's go up here now and come to the quarry and also the oil drilling rig. So let's put into here the quarry all of these steel item pipes. So the steel item pipes are going to produce bauxite. If you look at the uses of the steel item pipe, uh, in the quarry it's going to produce oh no it's going to produce salt oil. that's what I need actually as it happens and bauxite so there is 3% probability of producing four salt and a 5% probability of producing um, eight bauxite and they, they come in these numbers when you do this anyway so what's happening here is this, the efficiency goes up and as the efficiency goes up the recipe which is already eight EU per tick goes up as well but we run out. This advanced steam boiler can only produce 30, uh, 128, I think, EU per tick. So I'm going to replace it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to just break this off like this. And we're going to use the, the high voltage one, which we made last time. There's an advanced steam turbine. I don't want that one. I've got it in the backpack here, I think, or in this chest. So we made, last time we made a high voltage steam turbine. What I can do is I can put this high voltage steam turbine down here, for example, like that. It doesn't have to be, it doesn't matter about this covering up this one here, that's not, not important. And then we can attach the steam to this, into this here from this large steam boiler. Try again. And then that's going to start generating power and using steam. Hopefully, actually, the steam was going down there. I was wondering if it's not generating enough steam, in which case we were going to have to upgrade this large to the advanced one. So on top of here, I'm going to put a uh, this transformer that we've just created in here. And the transformer, the only thing that's important about the transformer is the output face. So at the moment, we can put this down here like this, and the output face will probably be behind it. I, yes, it is. But we need it to go down because that's where the cable is. All the other sides are input faces. So what we need to do now is we also need to connect it up with an aluminium pipe or something that's high voltage. And I do have one of those in the backpack here. I've got three aluminium. We only need one cables. So we just put this down here like that. And then we can just connect it into, the, into here and into 
on this side so we take it from the from the turbine oh it won't connect of course because i haven't shift right clicked the middle of this to be the output let's just do that so now it connects into here and as you can see this has used up all its power and it's coming into here because this has now got 102 whereas this one's only got 51 so it's going to use that up first so what we now need to do is connect this onto this uh, pipe down here onto this cable down here if i can if i can't i'll just i need to do two things actually so we'll just go down two blocks here so we need to connect this on top of that but we also need the output of this one coming in because we can't connect until the output's there so we can try right clicking the top of that that, that doesn't work so we shift right click this middle one and then we can right click here so now it's producing it's giving providing a power of 100 and um, I'm not sure what this produces as you can see it's going down f oh, actually it's going up fairly quickly as it happens it used all the power up so now it's powering up these machines and uh, so what's going to happen now let's just come along here and make the construction we'll put in some stone so into the blue stone so this is now powering up these machines so this should now be powering up here we probably lost oh we didn't actually we were okay so this is 11 eu per tick so now... right from the last time i have i'd got some titanium ore when i was using stainless steel in the quarry uh that's what so what we need to do with this we put these into the mace right to here uh it's the only use for it i think let's look yeah, the only use for this particular titanium ore is putting it in the, in the macerator, which will produce two titanium dust, uh, crushed dust. And the use of the two titanium crushed dust is where you need two times that, and it'll put into the produced four hot ingots. So that's a good way of doing it in terms of performance. That'll give us the best performance. So let's put those into the macerator here, and that's going to come out like that. And macerator is fairly fast, which is good. Uh, and then we can have a look at titanium in here as well. That was stainless steel. So we should have some crushed dust. Now we've got 12. So with these 12 crushed dust, we need that that amount. I have got some manganese sulfuric solution in here. And here we've got um, two output tanks. So this one I would set up as a high priority This for 10. And this one here should have zero because I can replace this tank whenever I want to. And then that's putting it into this bronze fluid input hatch. And so all we need to do now is to put the manganese crush dust into here. And that's taken four out and will start to process. Uh, it doesn't tell you what it's processing, but what you will see is in here, we should get fluid coming out, being reduced from here a little bit. So what's it, 1850. So it'll lose 500 So once it's processed the next outputs from here. So that's not sure what we're doing in here, 4,000. And this is, should be empty. And this should, yes, now it's 18, 18,000 or 18 buckets of manganese sulfuric solution. So if we come along here, now we should have some hot ingots, titanium hot ingots, we've got four. So we'll end up with 12. Uh, so that's one way of doing this particular process and we should have we put in 50 we should have 100 le minus 12 it is going to give us 88 so that's our 88 so we could take these with us like that and that will quite happily go into the input hatch here in fact it probably would be better if i said i want 100 ingots wouldn't it so let's just do that in here Put those back again and we've got 12 of those but let's go to the crafting recipes and say we want um, that's stored crafting we want 100 of these so we've got 88 so let's say 88 now next so it'll use all of those up and we don't have to do anything we just let it do its own thing so the other the other way i was doing was with bauxite we've covered bauxite already i think and it's fairly straightforward we just need a lot of it in here i have got a oh, redstone dust i need two more i've been processing redstone dust to make ruby dust so let's have a look in here ruby dust i'm not seeing any ruby dust in here why not oh of course something because i haven't got the wrong view haven't i let's try again with ruby dust it helps 
I've got 174 ruby dust. Uh, that was about 10 stacks, I think, of redstone. So we can put those into here like this. And then remove the redstone that we've got in here, the 8, because it needs 10. And then it'll start to process these very slowly to produce them but it'll work and as it works the efficiency here will go up i've added another eight upgrades so it's got 16 upgrades in total which gives you an overclock of 32. so the original machine was 32 so 32 plus 32 is 64. so this will probably end up with a speed of around about four times but maybe not for this quantity of ruby dust we would need quite a lot of ruby dust in order to get those up to that speed oh so let's quickly go over here again and have a look at the quarry. I'm not sure what I'm going to do. <laughs> it's really weird, actually. So this has now gone up to efficiency 128 of 128. So now the, it's using up 128 EU per tick. So that would, wouldn't allow any other machines to run. But this one's holding its own, so it's quite happily producing enough power. The power for the cables, by the way, is not the same as the machines. So, for example, this is a aluminium cable so it's got 496 eu possible hold input so this can take 496 input but the output will be 128 um but i'm not sure 100 percent sure about this i think the output's actually slightly more so if we come around actually let's come around, around here and have a look at these cables these are um electron cable so they can take 1024 and as you can see it's keeping up with the speed last time i did this um wrong machine yeah last time i did this it ran out of it ran out of power so it never reached the efficiency of 128 it, it was staying at around about 64 i think with other machines running the, the power wasn't adequate so it wasn't running fast enough as you can see this is going down. We're getting a reasonably large amount of stuff in this diamond chest. Oh, large diamond chest now. So as you can see, we've already got. It's the salt that all that was what I was really wanting to get because I need salt to, in order to make um, chlorine, and chlorine is one of the important ingredients for the recipes that we've been doing. So all I need to do is I've put salt into here like this, but I need to break these up first of all. So we'll put these into the macerator, like like this and then that makes these salt crushed salt ore and we can put this into here and then the crushed salt ore will come back again let's have a look at the uses of salt just to rem just to remind ourselves about it i think i typed that in wrong yes i did let's just try salt so and the uses of this salt crushed ore is to make three salt and that will go through automatically when that's been processed. So we'll get the salt coming in. And then I'll just put the salt into here. And that will produce chlorine and oxygen. Um, this is still do this is still processing ruby dust, as you can see. And the efficiency now is 1. Fantastic. <laughs> but it does take a long time before this actually gets up. I think the max overclock is around about 4. Because the base recipe, the current consumption is 16, uh, and the base recipe is 32, so that would double it. With a, with a 64 EU per tick, that means you can go twice as fast, so you can go four times as four times the actual speed, which is good because this, as you can see, is horribly slow. And it's not my favourite machine, <laughs> to be honest with you. But you can see these are actually diminishing, so we're getting loose some of the fingers. Right, that's enough for that. So before I go to those, one process I want to show you. Let's fly up here. Uh, that I have built, I haven't shown you yet, but it's a fairly straightforward one, so I don't want to necessarily go through the details. So what we would like to do is to make come along here and have a look at this. So here we've got boosted diesel, and I've got, well, actually that's 200 buckets worth of boosted diesel. And the recipe for boosted diesel, if you come along and look in here, is a standard diesel, which we've made from uh, heavy and light crude oil plus this distal ether, ether so the distal ether the recipe for that is made from two ethanol and acrylic acid uh, so it's a tiny amount of acrylic acid compared to ethanol which will produce uh, 
Oh, actually produces 250 millibuckets of distal and 250 millibuckets of water. Don't need the water for anything, so we can simply dispose of it. So that's getting this. So the water is coming out of here, and it's going into this automatic trash can. So, so the next recipe along here was to make ethanol. The reason I'm having to use three chemical reactors is because this particular one requires water. <laughs> so I'm actually using could use the water back again. I'm not bothering because we got a huge supply of water from the pump. The sulfuric acid and ethylene. And ethylene is comes directly from the um, uh, distillation tower. Sulfuric acid comes again from the distillation tower, but in two processes. And here we're making acrylic acid. And acrylic acid will also produce water. So we need propane, and the propane comes from the distillation tower and oxygen. But I've got a reasonable supply of oxygen and it's coming from the it's coming from the equal um, electrolyzer here. So as you can see, we can get from this one we can get chlorine, we can get hydrogen, and that's from the no, that's from the salt. So the water gives hydrogen and oxygen. So the oxygen will then go out. I probably need to empty out some of this hydrogen. One of the tricks you can use, you can just get rid of that like that, and then that will start to produce, produce some more oxygen. And so the oxygen can come into here. So if I haven't got enough oxygen, which I've got plenty of oxygen as it happens, we can, um, we don't need that much acrylic, only 25 millibuckets per bucket of propane. And one of the tricks is here, as you, these are steel tanks from modern industrialization, very handy as it happens. So this one needs, as you, I've left it connected here, propane. So let's go and have a look. I might be able to have some propane, maybe not, I'm not, I think I've run out. Yes, I've run out. I need to put the some tanks down here like this. So these are stainless steel tanks. This is a steel tank. The blue ones are stainless steel. Oh, no, sorry. The blue ones are aluminium tanks. So they're 16 buckets. And you just right click them onto something or this. For example, here I've got some water, some hydrogen in here. And in this particular tank, I've also got eight buckets of hydrogen. But what it can do is it can right click this onto that tank there. And it'll fill it up. And all I need to do now is come along here to this connection and shift left click that. It'll get rid of all the hydrogen goes out here and then I can put the rest of the hydrogen in like that and it's, it's got rid of. So I don't need to disconnect these these tanks either. I can just right click them in the fluid. And that's the same is true for, for air. So ethylene comes in here, propane comes in here and the output we don't need anything else. I put an oxygen one here just in case I, I needed some more and I don't. This, by the way, is doing the same thing as we've done before. Medium volt to low voltage uh, transformer. And these pipes can talk, can can hold 256 EU. Um, but the generator for E for low voltage is only produces 32. So in fact, you get a capacity of eight times I think yeah yeah you get eight times so you can pack eight times more machines using this technique than you could do it before anyway that's it for today I think I'm gonna so that's it for this episode I do hope you've enjoyed it anyway next time we shall be carrying on with a little bit more to do with modern industrialization but not very much so we're getting towards the end of that anyway until then I wish you all the best Bye for now.